We are joined by Elizabeth Larson, another one of the Invent Oregon students, and we'd love to learn a little bit more about you, Elizabeth. Why don't you start out, what uh, university are you representing, and what was your degree program that you just finished? Hello, everyone. I'm Elizabeth. Nice to meet you. I'm from Willamette University in Salem, Oregon. I just graduated with uh, a BA in studio art and a BS in chemistry in 2021. So I've just been working for a year since and adjusting to post-grad life. That's excellent. A huge congratulations for all of your hard work that has gotten you here. And uh, another congratulations on uh, wrapping up an internship. That's wonderful. You know, tell us what is your team name and, and what role do you serve on the team? Fabulous. I am part of Learn to Play, which uh, unfortunately does happen to be just a team of one. And I am working to fill all of those roles, but I'm actually really enjoying that. I'm a person that kind of gets bored with just one one challenge or one topic. So it's actually been really fun to think about filling like the business and like the engineering, the design and the marketing role. But I definitely could use some team members that would make me stronger, but I'm still having fun with the one man show so far. <laughs> That's excellent. Everyone's entrepreneurship and innovation journey takes a lot of twists and turns and you find yourself maybe exploring different avenues of it that you didn't know you were going to love. I think it's really lovely. So I, I have to know, tell me more about Learn to Play. What is it? What are you trying to do, create here? Okay, so essentially, I'm really interested at in the intersection between art and science. I really lucked out with my uh, degrees it kind of happened by accident. I just started taking all these welding classes. And and then suddenly I was like, well, I'm just gonna get the major. And so I, I became really interested in sculpture. And also, I was working with a lot of really intricate biochemical structures in um, this biochemistry lab. And we were building these DNA scaffolds for cancer detection. And these structures were so hard to explain to people because there was no way to conceptualize them three-dimensionally. So it really just made me think about how, first of all, how awesome science is and how cool it is that all of these things exist, like a microscopic scale. But secondly, like that there's really a need for explaining these structures on a larger level. And because I'm also a person that enjoys really playful things and sometimes really absurd things. I just had this idea one day that I needed to make a nucleic acids playground um, and take all these structures and blow them up like three dimensionally and make it an educational. And I just became really fixated on this idea. And maybe partly it's, I, I also really love teaching. I've worked as a writing instructor. I've worked in elementary schools as like an assistant science teacher. I've worked as a tutor. There's really nothing more that I love than teaching. And so I kind of saw this opportunity to bring together all these things that I was so passionate about, which was like the science, the art, the education, installation, and like these whimsical ideas. And so that was the birthplace of the nucleic acids playground, which more formally I'm calling learn to play as a business model. That is absolutely incredible that you have, you took something that you were inspired by, saw an avenue for it, have moved forward to develop this into something that you can share and can, seems like it can be so flexible. And with that, you know, it there's a lot of different avenues that this could be deployed in a lot of different markets, a lot of different ways this could, this could grow. So where, you know, who do you see as your target market and, and where do you see this being able to scale up to? Where are the, the avenues to install this? I guess I'd like to start like locally in my own communities in Oregon. I'd love to be able to like prototype this playground and then like work to find the national grant funding or even like private funding to have it installed somewhere. And then I'd really like it to maybe just grow as a national model that maybe we could have all these different spaces that are geared towards science communication and education for everyone. And that you know, we could have multiple different themed parks and they could be installed throughout the country. I guess one thing I've been thinking about a lot is we create museums as places for people to go and access information. And that information is supposed to be available to the public. But there are a lot of ways in which museums are still like incredibly inaccessible to people. And so by placing like these educational spaces in a true public setting and having there be no admission or any requirements for partaking or playing um, in these spaces that maybe 
it could be more accessible and we could change the narrative around science communication because I think there's still a lot of really inaccessible like language and approaches that are used with science communication education. And I also just think that the way we present science is often incredibly serious and sometimes downright boring. So uh, I think this is my, my, I'd like to lead an ultimate uprising against boring scientists or boring scientific papers through my whimsical structures. <laughs> I, I absolutely agree with you. You found a way to take something you love and seen an avenue for how important it is for to share it with other people and what a huge impact and effect that could have on the next generation of scientists and entrepreneurs and inventors. You know, at Invent Oregon, we try very hard to be inclusive and understand that when the next generation and young innovators get exposed to STEM education in a way that's accessible and speaks to them, they become, you know, that, that stays with the rest of their lives and they understand that they can do it and it can be accessible. I think that's absolutely beautiful. And I really hope to see where you take this in the future. And I know you've shared with us where you'd like to see this go, you know, but I'm wanting to learn more about you as an innovator, you know, as you've been going through this process and developing learn to play into what it is now you know what are some insights that you've learned about what it's like to be an inventor i'm just so happy that i was able to participate in this program this program wasn't really officially initiated in my university so i actually had to reach out and email the program and thankfully they were willing to let me join even though i didn't have like a university advisor so that was just like an amazing opportunity that i was able to partake and i've just, I don't know, I've enjoyed like every moment of it. I think my whole life I've um, been playing like roulette with what, you know, what is like my future career? What's my future path? And honestly, that's like my like most dreaded question. I think a lot of people actually, it's a dreaded question that your uncle you haven't seen in two years asks you at Christmas parties of what you're going to do with your life. And all you really want to tell them is that you're going to be a good person because I think that's what you should say is when you grow up, you just want to be a good person. I think that's more important than anything else you do. But it's nice to feel finally like maybe have more of an answer to that question that I actually feel really excited about because I do think that entrepreneurship is so fun. I, I just love the idea that you have to be good at so many things. I feel like this is finally a space where I could thrive because my whole life, everyone's been telling me like I need to focus more and perhaps they're right. Like, I'm a little too spontaneous, a little too scattered, a little too much of everything, um, a little too analytical to be a good artist, a little too chaotic to be a really good scientist. So as there's this magical little microcosm that I've discovered where I feel like I, I finally fit in and I can um, market things and talk to people and be extravagant and flamboyant and excited and be scientific and be artistic. So I think that for me, it's really just opening up some doors that I didn't really know existed or like I wanted to believe existed, but I didn't, I hadn't confirmed it. So it's like a little fairy tale adventure. And perhaps I fall off the bandwagon, I'll leave the honeymoon phase of the stark reality of taxes, death, and anything else depressing about life will get back to me. But for right now, I'm just um, elated. I almost don't have words for how beautiful that is to say that you see yourself as an inventor because you are unique. It is all of those things about yourself. You know, anyone can found a company, but getting people to invest in it and getting people to believe in it is really based on the founder. And when it's someone like you who believes in themselves and understands that their value and has this incredible background, these incredible skills, you're what makes the difference in it. I think that's just so amazing. I'm glad that you recognize that in yourself. And I hope that everyone throughout the competition does too. And the judges do in June. And, you know, as we are getting close to, to, to the end of June and, and the big day on the stage, you know, after Invent Oregon is over, you know, what do you think some of the, the key takeaways will be for you that you've gained from being in Invent Oregon specifically? Yeah, I think there's so many things. Like immediately when I began boot camp, I made so many connections and friends with the other competitors. I loved hearing about everyone else's projects. So I really hope that network stays like close and that we like continue to support each other. But I also was blown away by each workshop. I love learning about all the grant and funding opportunities. 
um, that are available like via government grants and local Oregon grants. And I also was blown away by the different like business models and as well as all the other pitch competitions. So I feel like this is just like the appetizer. Well, I don't know. It's a main course on Until Itself. And Vet Oregon is incredible. But perhaps it's like the appetizer to the like the grand feast of like more pitch competition. I hope that I'm able to make enough progress and be successful enough in this space that I can continue doing more pitch competitions because they're just so exciting to me. Like I want to go do all of them. I want to do the one in San Francisco. That's like the, I think it's called ties. And then I think there might be some more in Boston. They're everywhere. So I think that's the main thing is just kind of building this, this absurd and wonderful scientific communication playground empire. That's the dream. So we're going to keep chasing the dream. We'll have some backup plans. We'll understand, you know, maybe it won't work. That's okay. But I'm going to try my my darndest and learn a lot and have a good time. Well, at the end of this, you definitely have us all believing in your vision uh, and believing in you. And I can't wait to see you up on that stage, this stage, the next stage, uh, and see where all of this takes you. Elizabeth, it has been truly a pleasure to work with you through Invent Oregon and see, your, see you shine. And I, I can't wait to see what you bring to the stage on June 24th. <laughs> Thank you so much, Abigail, for your time. It's been so fun getting to know you as well as through this interview, another avenue in which to explore. So thank yeah. you so much. Thanks for being with us today. <laughs>